Welcome to the afters. Uncut bonus content for our best friends behind the paywall this week. We're fucking around with Jimmy and Larry uh, post Patrick Johnson podcast. Patrick Johnson Taylors. Patrick Johnson Taylors. Well, the man, the brand, the legend. Yeah. Um, Shout out Tyler for coming through as well. Absolutely. I will be stopping by their showroom in New York very quickly. I'm, I was immediately convinced, not only like, that's a brand where I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to stop by. Oh, I got to I got to pick something up. I got to get something. In. But then like you see someone really wearing it. Yeah. And you wore it very well on your wedding. Thank you so much. Um, Navy, Midnight Navy. Midnight. Midnight, Midnight Blue, Blue. Uh, shawl collar, one button, single pleat trousers with Belgians, which he was wearing as well. Yeah, dude. I mean, here's the thing, though. It's like I think that people picture P, the P. Johnson universe and they think like, oh, a wedding, right? Like I'll yeah. get my tux done or whatever. And just like the ready to wear is fucking incredible. I mean, I said that at the very end of the episode, but it's like knowing uh, a lot of people, you know, going to P. Johnson for like their wedding suits. Yeah. My brother has been a longtime customer and he's kind of always on like the made to measure end of it, um, you know, like booking an appointment. But the ready to wear is fucking gastronomical. Yeah. And the price is not what you think it's going to be. In a good way. In and a good way. <laughs> right. And it's not. And it's listen, we're not here to be like, yo, P, PJs is cheap. It's not cheap. No, but like if you want a, a nice slubby linen polo. Yeah. Or like a jeans, one of those kind of like shirt jackets where is like, is it a shirt? Is it a jacket? What the fuck's going on here? Yeah. Uh, in like a nice chalk stripe. Uh, Navy seersucker, like yep. my man's was wearing. Yeah, and my, yeah, that's your place. Which is it? It's this like class of like super casual tailoring brands that we were mentioning. You know, P. Johnson, Stofa, Salmon Um, exactly. Like, and so many brands just have these like kind of uh, more casual suiting options where you don't have to. It's not the, like the six to twelve week process of getting a suit made no. or, or altered for yourself. Which there's a time and place for that, absolutely. But this is kind of just like that, you know, slouchy comfort suited, which is great. I think I'm sold on that look for like the weather has seemingly turned. But like this idea of getting like a shacket or a jacket in like the same matching fabric as like a great pair of shorts that you can wear together with like a proper collared shirt or a tee or then like just break up. And I've never really like considered that. But then you see it on like. Nick and a guest from Stofa or or Patrick um, from P. Johnson, then you're like, oh, like it's a suit, but not a suit. And then you can easily just wear great trousers, yeah. great fucking shirt jacket. Like more people are probably going to be doing that, meaning more brands. I should say. Right. I feel like that's happening for sure. Uh, before we get to down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Sorry. Casual tailoring. Oh, right, Let's right, get right, into right. a fit check, Larry. Um, oh, speaking of Salmon I have on the new uh, city slippers, which I'm wearing super like casually today, but I can already see these working extremely well with all the new P. Johnson. I'm definitely going to be adding into my cart. Uh, you know what they did? Amazing. They did amazing. I know this is the rabbit hole. We're not supposed to get down, but I, it deserves to be mentioned because they might go on sale and people should know. Yo, for next summer, bro, the, their wide, long, double pleated shorts are fucking perfect. And I regret not buying a pair. But anyway, moving on up, Manresa socks, um, our legacy uh, third cut digiprint denim. Uh, the pleaser is Hanes. The shirt is Uniqlo C. Shout this out to the This is what you wore to the bazaar? Yeah, I washed it since Okay, then. all right, good. Um, Jesus Christ. So it, do, it does have some, it did get some wear and tear. I'm happy that uh, I didn't wear like my most expensive or nicest shit because of, you know, the wheeling, the dealing the sweating, the vetting, et cetera. Um, this shit, I like it, dude. Shout out fucking Claire Wade Keller, dude. Uniqlo C is the real fucking deal. Dude. Formerly of Givenchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it looks really fucking good. But what what Uniqlo kind of designer collaboration doesn't look good, right? Christoph Lemaire with you. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the gold standard for sure. That Jill I feel Saunders like with Jay. Plus, plus, plus Jay. Plus Jay. Uh, there has been numerous white mountaineering collabs, engineer garment collabs. I guess, you know why? She's not a designer that is Givenchy. Like, I, I respected her. and She's a great British designer. That was never, like, for me. So it's like, okay, I respect it from afar. I'm keeping up with, like, the designer carousel, whatever. But I'm not thinking of her in terms of, like, not even just my own wardrobe, personally, but, like, menswear. And then you look at the Uniqlo C offerings, whether it's, like, the big parachute pants or the this, like, kind of, like, crispy, boxy, like, casual button up. And it's, dude, for, like, 40 bucks. You can't go wrong. What is Uniqlo goo 
Stop. No, you know, I'm, I'm serious. You, I've been seeing a lot of bags. You know what? Uh, I had some intel into this. I remember. Uh, so I think it's actually a. I probably shouldn't speak on this because I don't know exactly, but I think it's like a subdivision or subline of Uniqlo that's that's big in Japan, big in Asia that they recently have brought over here. But I've been seeing a lot of bags because we were in Soho yesterday and seeing a lot of people yeah. uh, with the goo bags. Wait, how do you spell? Gu, gu, gu. Okay. <laughs> Uniqlo goo is what I fucking make in my pants after I get the deal of the lifetime of a, on a new fucking full fit from Uniqlo. C. Goo Co, the sister brand of the Uniqlo clothing chain under Fast Retailing Co, opened its first U.S. store in New York on Thursday, just last week. There you go. While also launching an online shop with a delivery service covering the entire country. Is it um, just bags and accessories or no, it's like full ass clothing. Damn. Is that named after the designer? Is that a person goo? No, <laughs> it's just goo. It's, it's just goo. Yeah, but what, what does it mean? I don't know. What does it have to have a meaning? What does Uniqlo mean? Well, Uniqlo C is C is for Claire Waite Keller. You know what Uniqlo means? What does Uniqlo mean? Unique clothing. Life wear or unique, something? No, you need clothing. Really? Yes. Huh. My mom, uh, they opened one in like, well, now Uniqlo is gigantic, but they opened up one in like uh, the uh, Garden State Plaza Mall, which is like the mall that my parents go to. My mom uh, would always call it Uniqlo. Mm. You want some Uniqlo? I'm like, okay, mom. Do you think Goo was like an Asian person's name? 100%. G-U, is it not? Like, is is that meant like this store? Goo. When you just said Goo? Yeah. Well, you said Uniqlo Goo. You never just said like, yo, I've been seeing all this sick goo in the streets of Soho, but I have been seeing sick goo. Yeah. Um, No, I assumed it was a designer's last name. Okay. And that was like their subdivision, you know, because of, uh, you know, their deal they signed with Uniqlo. Anyway. Stop talking. (laughs) What's the hat? Yeah. So I was trying to do, dude, fucking chill. (laughs) Uniqlo uh, goo moving on up. (laughs) The hat is Austria, rolly on the wrist, wedding ring on the finger, wife on the pinky, chrome on the other hand. Six milli peppermint zins. I had a delicious sparkling raspberry peach Celsius. The hydro flask is full of Lower East Side's finest. Oh, my underwear is, I don't know, Supreme Hanes, presumably. Nice. James? Uh, I'm wearing uh, our legacy tassel loafers, Amazon socks. The pants are William Frederick. A lot slimmer than I'm used to, but hey, tis the season, I guess. Uh, you you Bought them online or no? I bought these at Ann Sun, um, which is obviously one of the best stores in New York City. Mm-hmm. Another Shout kind of bellwether, man. just proving that New York retail is so fucking back. Um, a place where you will discover new brands, big and small, such as like Uniqlo Goo or <laughs> William Frederick, a you know one man operation out of I think Cleveland. Probably the only good thing coming out of Cleveland right now, besides Deshaun <laughs> Watson's Goo. Um, <laughs> I mean, dude, he would be on the the Mount Rushmore of, of six six C's, yeah. six C's, just sickos. Yeah. Um, As an American, you can't just use the phrase. It doesn't work that way. No, you, you have to be in the midst of an Australia. Got it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. So we don't have the pass on this episode of the after is good to know. But I love these pants and shout out William Frederick. He's doing cool, good things. Uh, shout out all the small brands. Billy F, baby. Big things coming soon. Small things coming soon. Um, That's what she said. The zip up. Sweater zip up cardigan. I think it's a zip up like funnel neck cardigan is from smock. It's like a jacket. Is it? Yeah. No, but it's got it's a like, collar. Like it's honestly it looks like a track jacket. Knit. Yeah, but you can, you can look, look at this loose ass gauge, bro. I know, dude. I can see through you, bro. I can see right through you. I can wear this to the beach and just Does that nips the, on uh, nips on knits on a day like today where I'm underdressed and you're like quasi like, is this warm? It looks cool. Obviously. Um, no, but it's perfect because I was just biking over the bridge. So it's okay. like I'm moving. Catching a breeze. Catching a breeze, but I'm moving through like the kind of crisp, chilled air. Uh, but shout out Smock. Like, you know. Yeah. It's the, it's the in-house private label from Mohawk General Store. It's honestly doing fucking numbies. And I know this because they're also, they have a wholesale account at Venn Space. Yeah. The, one of, if not the best store in New York. That's how you know it's good, people. And Kevin, as a buyer that has seen it all, done it all, Smoked it all, I'm sure. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, he's bought it all and sold it all for sure. Yeah. So he definitely, you know, <laughs> has like the. It all. <laughs> he designed a dispensary in Humboldt County. Oh, really? Yes. Like, yeah, like the interiors or yes. like the. Okay. Yeah. Nice, yeah. dude. Kevin can so, do it all. He certainly has. That's true. Puffed some Chiba. Smock is getting better every single season. Yeah. Well, I knew so they hired someone from I believe like the Mon Italy family. Mm. 
And I'm blanking on dude's name, but shout out the Japanese homie who works at Smock. And uh, I was that's when I was like, oh shit, they're taking it serious. Um, and Smock, another brand, and I think you, it's fair to call it a full fledged brand at this point because it is like in other doors besides Mohawk. Mm-hmm. Tons of casual suiting, yeah, or like 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 matching elements, yes, yeah. And like Crazy. it's like a jacket you just throw on. Um, great fabrics for like the hotter months, I yeah. think, because it's designed by a guy from Southern California. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, love this fucking loose knit. The colors are great. They're nice and muddy. And underneath that is a shirt from 18 East. Mm-hmm. My guy, Anto- our guy, Antonio. Shout out fucking Kenny. Cleaned up at the bazaar mm-hmm. um, right across from Larry. And this, I t- okay, I, I told this story in a, in a dumper, but I think it, uh, it uh, bears repeating. So I bought some things from 18 East online and just like the web shop, right? And this is different between like online shopping, IRL shopping. I was going to some fucking bullshit event over like fashion week, New York brand week, whatever. <laughs> And uh, pop my head into the 18 East store because I saw Antonio just chilling on the couch. <laughs> and so we're like catching up. He's telling me about like uh, his fucking kids or whatever. I'm telling him about like uh, the kids know, you don't have. The kids I don't have. <laughs> my goo. And, um, and I'm just kind of like half, you know, absentmindedly flipping through the collection. And I feel something that stops me in my tracks. And I tell him to shut the fuck up about his kids for one second <laughs> and tell me about the shirt. And the f- like, feel the shit, bro. Feel this. Feel the gauziness. Oh, yeah. That's nice. It's fucking nice. And you never would have gotten this from, and I went back and looked at the photos online. Like, you wouldn't necessarily have gotten um, a one for one understanding of like the shirt if you were just shopping online. Yeah. They have good copy, though. I know we've talked a lot about copy with Palace. Absolutely. Has great copy. Absolutely. But I would not have like understood what I literally had my hands on um, if I was just perusing online. So, no, for sure. immediately cop this shit for an insanely fair price of i think 188 damn and you know got to hear straight from his fr- from the creator's brain about like all the details and shit is there like embroidery on like the side as yeah, well there's a little uh flower on the side here i think mm. just a nice little detail yeah They're like a little 18 signature i'm trying yeah. to find whatever we don't need to say what, the, the, product, the product name of the shirt on the site do we necessarily do people want that kind of just Probably. shop the site you'll fucking see it i mean also there is nothing that you're gonna buy from 18 and you're gonna be disappointed like exactly. talk about value holy shit yeah there it is. Found is that it? it? Yeah, that's it. The Jesper vintage button down shirt. Barely indigo, lightweight. How do you pronounce that? Cotty? Sure. Well, I don't know. You're the fucking uh, culture I'm the one. Indian guy. It is proudly made in India from hand woven and naturally dyed cotton. And that's how you get that fucking best in class hand feel, baby. Yeah. Good collar, too, dude. OK, that's the one thing. All right, let's let's get in the weeds a little bit because it's the afters and we can do whatever we want. Look at that fucking collar roll on that button down. That's from a fucking menswear genius not that claire Waite keller isn't a genius in her own right but like this is borderline baby collar uh this collar is based on a 1960s shirt from gant there that you he go found while going through his father's uh possessions there you go bro see there yeah. case in point which is also in the copy yeah oh okay hell yeah <laughs> from uh wait what what year 1964 wow nailed it dude hell yeah um, the hat is Studio Nikki. Shout out Studio Nicholson. Mm-hmm. See you guys in October. Um, we got Bottega on this wrist, Bottega on this pinky, Jill Sonder on this cuff, Haynes boxers, sipping on a Nalgene of Lori Side's finest. Oh, the sunglasses were Sun Buddies. Oh, and I, they are though. And I was wearing Persol 714s. All right. Fit check complete. What are we going to talk about, Lawrence? <sighs> I don't know. Should we talk about like suits? Um, after a pod like that, it's just like, I mean, you and I, when you say you own a lot of tailoring already? By accident, I do. <laughs> what do you mean by accident? Like, I didn't set out to be like, you know what? Oh, like, okay. I need to build a suit rotation. Totally. They just kind of like came into my possession <laughs> through flow, through vint- through vintage, through kind of like um, shopping specifically sh- for events this summer, buying suits, <laughs> but never like, because tailoring as like a category, I guess if you, I don't really break my wardrobe up into like categories. Do okay. You? Like, uh, I mean, you think of like all your your entire wardrobe and like in cohesion. Are you like knits, denim, tailoring? I do shirts, for I do for the things jersey. that I just have like way too many of, mainly because I'm, my wife is always complaining. Which at this point, my big three, and maybe you have a big three, and we can't talk footwear because like I think between you and I, we could shoe every 
shoeless child across the globe, assuming they wore a men's size nine and 10 um, respectively. But I think that for me, it's denim, leather jackets, and then fucking vintage button ups and button downs. Mm. Those are so shirts, jeans, leather jackets, yes. just too much. So that's even like getting within the weeds of like, that's like subcategories. Um, I would say like lightweight outerwear. Mm. Uh, you are the face of that movement. Puffas. Damn, uh, really? Uh, nah, I do have too many though. Um, sh- outerwear shirts and pants. <laughs> oh, pants, pants. But tailoring, I do have one closet that's entirely dedicated mm-hmm. to tailoring. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I need to like, take an audit of what I own in that category sure, and kind of like understand what the gaps are, because I think that it's too easy to just be like, Oh, like I'm going to, you know, go out to the extremes. I'll go out to the extreme poles, like getting a, a, a lilac double breasted yeah. vintage courage suit, a fun suit. Yeah. Um, I think I have too many double breasted suits. I think, Ooh. you know, I have like a fun Jay Muser suit. I have uh, a velvet, our legacy suit, or sorry. Yeah. Velvet, our legacy suit. That's very fun. That's as dark, fun as it gets. A it. dark gray velvet, our legacy suit. That is a collaboration <laughs> with uh, Denim Tears and the estate of Tupac Shakur. <laughs> Yo, you have that. That's, you know, first of all, all time triple collab. Um, Cause it's, it's literally like, uh, like Yo. throwing. No, if you had, you're just throwing like, and, and I understand there is intention behind that collab. <laughs> I understand, but it literally said when you, I forgot that that happened. You close your eyes, you're throwing darts at it like a fucking board of just random yeah. shit. It's like the, the fucking family guy joke generator yeah. bit from South Park. Yo, the SpongeBob or the two pack for today. <laughs> Damn, that's a gray velvet suit. Pleats, yeah, double breasted. What are the deets? Uh, I don't know, bro. I've, I've got it tailored. I don't think it's double breasted. I got okay. it tailored. So I know it fits, but I don't know. I don't know if you could. Can you pleat velour? Or velvet? Can you plead yeah, velvet? I think you, you could plead anything, dude. What can't you plead? What can't this man plead? You just get, you just have more of the fabric and you plead it. Now, whether or not the integrity of that fabric will hold up to the the, the stitch that you're adding. I think it might be too heavy to stitch. <laughs> I mean, I don't. <sighs> I think you could plead anything. I'm going to go on, on record. Uh, what about whale foreskin? <laughs> can't plead that. <laughs> you turn into a chair, though. Um, yeah. I like you can plead anything as a little title. Plead velvet interest. pants. Let's see if this fucking you can plead anything. Free. Oh, I guess you can. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I feel like OL that that double breasted. Um, I got a double breasted OL suit over there. Really? Yeah, I got it. I dropped. I get, took it to the tailor and I dropped it off here, and I got to take it home. They, they're. Uh, I think they introduced that with that uh, that made in England um, mm-hmm. collection, and then it's shown up in like uh, the Natura shit. It's shown up in Denim Tears Two Box Record. Shown up in uh, Stussy Workshop. That's like their house style now. Yeah, but okay, no knowing that so knowing that I don't knowing that like oh, and for the longest time I was like, you know what? If I got to go to a funeral, I got this black suit from uh, I think uh, Uniqlo U. But actually, mm. before it was Uniqlo, you when it was just Uniqlo and Christoph Lemaire. Yeah, what was it? Wait, did wait? Was it called Uniqlo U and then they changed the name? Wasn't you? No, no, it used to be just Uniqlo plus Lemaire. Huh? I think. Okay. And I know this because I sold it at the bazaar for ten dollars. Oh, nice. Maybe twenty. What a um, deal! Yeah, but that was my black suit, and then I was like, I, this doesn't fit me anymore. So, if I were to have, to, if I were to like be strategic about the yeah. tailoring portion of my wardrobe, which I should be now that like one I've purged. Yes. And I've, t- and I've by the way, what, now that I've purged, I've, I finally have like free hangers. Oh yeah. Cause before the purge for the bazaar, it was always just like, how can I like squeeze a hanger yeah. out of like whatever the fuck you're literally doing quantum mechanics to like get yeah. another garment. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what if I put a shirt on top of this shirt on yeah, this hanger? I've been there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now there. I see these empty hangers. It's like, oh, the potential opportunity. Wait, have, you been, have you immediately started shopping yet? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I what bought I bought uh, the, <laughs> I bought the, the palace Ralph Lauren pajama pants. Oh, you did? <laughs> I did. Nice. <laughs> I'll probably be wearing them. Maybe I'll bring them to Paris. My G. I guess mm-hmm. we've already been there whenever this comes out. But yeah. I got a uh, a umbro piece from slam jam fuck yeah dude um it's pretty blokey it's actually a bit junior watanabe on my rear on my rear it's like a it's like a kit and then like 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 a shirting sleeves Ooh. umbro europe is so good dude it's umbro slam jam oh it's like collab well so slam jam umbro so i put it on the fitties 
Um, I might need to get some clarification from either James at Umbro yeah, or my James. boy Dom at Slam Jam. But uh, I think that right now it's that's like just a Slam Jam project. Um, just like the, the shit that we're seeing on like all the mood boards. But all shit. the good Umbro shit that's been that happened for whatever they're uh, sorry that I don't remember the anniversary that happened like at the tail end of last year into this year. All that good shit is like Umbro Europe led. I don't think like like what is even Umbro USA? I couldn't even like necessarily tell you. OK, uh, Hard Times is the motto of the Umbro Fall Winter 2024 collection designed by Slam Jam for Umbro. Oh, shit. Okay, interesting. interesting. And this Bring is a retailer Umbro. into design? Com. I mean, they know what their customers want. Damn, dude. Absolutely. Wait, was that... Uh, so it's not a soccer jersey, but it, but it's it's like a shirt? Uh, let me, let me oh. show this to you. It's, it's, Let's it's, define... I can define this garment. I'll try to. It's uh, right here. That is a jersey. <laughs> that yeah, is... But wait, but wait. It's a long sleeve jersey. Wait for it. Okay, I'm waiting for it. What's going on here, buddy? What's going on? Oh here? shit! I am what? I am wrong. What's so it what's is that is a hybrid. It's okay, guys. Imagine you were wearing a proper button up or button down shirt, and you put on a short sleeve soccer jersey over it. Now imagine that as one garment. That is, you are so right. That looks like some junior. It's a bit Comme des Garcons. It's a bit yeah. junior. Um, it's hybrid. a bit in my fucking possession on the twenty seventh. I also bought a Margaret Howell Ooh. zip up little polo like sweater situation. Um and some Trebian, I, you know, I love a fucking private label. Bought some Trebian leather shorts from everywhere. From just Trebian, I'm not exactly sure what I think they're just calling it Trebian ready to wear now. Damn, they changed it again. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it doesn't matter the name because it's always good. It took a minute to <laughs> arrive. Not their fault. Apparently, there's a massive flooding in Germany. Really? And so my airplane, the airplane carrying my garments, wasn't able to leave Frankfurt, <laughs> which is a fucking. Was held up on the runway. Look, if climate change is going to affect me getting Johns, yeah. I might have to do something about this shit. Yeah, what, yeah, what are you going to stop littering, please? I might have to <laughs> stop ordering Johns from international <laughs> stores. For real, dude. Um, well, I'm happy that they're... Well, are, did they land safe? Did they make it? The Umbro hasn't, but the uh, Trebian stuff did. Okay. And I can it. confirm that they're both fucking gaseous. Damn. Okay. So the shopping is the shopping is back on for the boys. I mean, here's the thing. This is what happened. And, and, and I've started receiving uh, bullshit that is, you know, also started going into bins. Okay. Well, we don't need to know about the bullshit. No, but bins. I'm telling you, the bidding has begun. Oh, all, the <laughs> The, the binning? The binning for the bazaar has begun. The great binning yes. has begun. Damn, dude. I mean, listen, I'm already excited for next year. What a fucking day. I mean, I know we already, we already talked about it at length, but fuck But I think it. a suit is a, a, a conservative kind of forever suit in like a conservative navy or gray. Yo, I sold my, the first suit I ever got, a J. Crew Ludlow. Oh. Which you I had still it, had that? I had it on... <laughs> I had it at the back of my rack. I had all my tailoring at the back of the rack. I was like, oh, whatever. If people want this suit, it's like 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Chad came over. And he's like, yo, what is this? Chad <laughs> Senzel from Shoot Rack. And he goes, yo, what is this? And I'm like, it's a J. Crew Ludlow from like, and I'm doing the math. I'm like, oh, shit, it's vintage now. Like, yeah, that shit is an OG vintage Ludlow. I, I don't remember who bought it. It was at the very end of, as I was packing up. I don't remember if it was Chad or someone else or if I just gave it away. But people are like, yo, this is kind of fire. <laughs> this is like, this is like what is like hot right now. It's like 15, 20 year old J. Crew. I'm like, oh, uh, fuck. Did I, should I have just sold this for more? It kind of was like, if I remember, weren't they like, they were like fake Mad Men, almost Tom Brownie kind of, you know, wasn't that the cut? I don't, I yeah, really they were owned a lot. They were a little shiny. Mm, shark skin. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Look, between my insane, like red, our legacy suit that looks like fucking a wallpaper, you know, like a like a carpet uh, wallpaper to the lilac uh, double breasted to the Marnie Uniqlo suit I have. Oh, that's right. That um, is a loud. That is as loud as. Fuck. Yeah, I only I kind of only have loud suits. So I definitely if I were to get a next suit and maybe PJ is the guy to fucking help me make it happen. I think I got to go just like traditional conservative, you know. All the events in my life have been like fun. There's been a gay wedding. There's been a heterosexual wedding. There's <laughs> less been, fun. <laughs> uh, a G and wedding. Um, black black tie gala. But it's like, all right, I got to like do something that is like eventually I'm going to have to go to a funeral. Yeah. Well, God forbid. Yeah, they have like, people do die. Yeah, it is the one business that, you know, is recession proof. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody does die. That's true. Certain uh, to quote. Um, so. Certain sectors of entertainment and death. That's not a bad fucking um, 
what's his the little Stevie? Little, no, from uh, fucking uh, the E Street Band. What's his fucking? Yeah. No, what's his uh, actual name? Steve Van Zandt. Stephen Van Zandt. There it is. Lil Stevie. Okay. That put- AKA Lil Stevie. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, he's. Lil Stevie grew up. No, Bruce calls him Lil Stevie, bro. Well, because that because it's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, the boss. Yeah, I mean, he the, he the boss. He called hey, him hey, whatever, the boss. whatever he wants. Bruce. I have the exact opposite problem. I need a more fun suit. I weirdly have, like, kind of fun, louder tuxedos, even like the one I got married in. Like, that's like a little bit of a statement. Um, and then I got like a crazy one from Gant, especially when I throw on the fucking pussy bow blouse. But I don't have a suit that's not like a conservative double breasted or not like, yeah, the navy black. Yeah, I you only that. have that. You only have that. You don't have fun. I have like funner sport coats, but like in terms of like a full suit that would be gay wedding ready. I don't know if I necessarily have that, especially, you know, if it's not a black tie gay wedding, I might be shit out of luck. So I actually so this is the duality of man at work. We have the exact opposite problem. Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. Maybe I should lose some weight and hit your booth at the bazaar next year. Maybe. Uh, or you just wait till the end and I just give you a five hundred dollar track jacket for free. Um, oh, my God. Yo, I got to thank you for that publicly, dude. Dude, when I pull you up. Oh, I'm, you did. No, I I did not. And I wanted to. I had in my notes for last week, but it totally fucking I guess we didn't get to it. Dude, I'm going to wear the most ridiculous tracksuit to the podcast and we're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun on my expense. And but I I don't know. I'm into it, dude. Okay. Can you wear a track? Is this tracksuit weather? Sure. When it, when isn't it? Well, when when is it tracksuit weather is actually the question. Never. In my opinion. (laughs) Never. 2004, maybe. Okay. All right. Well. We'll let the we'll let the people decide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, in your brat suit, bro. It is, brat it is like it's not exactly brat green, brat but it's, green. Pre- it's cousins. But it's, it's cousins. pretty brat adjacent, yeah. dude. <laughs> um, a segment we did, Patrick, with Bratrick that I really enjoyed was <laughs> kind of throwing some dress codes at him, and I think he did a pretty good job of like really being like prescriptive of like what would work within the confines of the I think four dress codes that we threw his way. Do you? like when people hit you with the dress code that's you know a little like out of left field or a little like pinteresty i was gonna say that i think patrick trying to perform the mental gymnastics to have viable serviceable answers to our pretty standard dress codes proved the point which is that not to be some fucking classist jerk but it's like yo either have a black tie wedding or have a non-black tie wedding and let the people not embarrass themselves as wedding going adults because honestly dude like the shit that we had listed out are very standard ones right that's why i put them on there to some degree yeah Yeah. and i mean okay beach i I don't know i've only been to one beach wedding ever in my life been okay so outside of that the other one i feel like i've seen them and i guess it's not just weddings sometimes people are like throwing goofy fun cocktail parties and and creating these dress codes so they can like be the main character of their own life right with all these extras that are supposed to be their friends and family i want to like do away with all of them and i think he kind of proved it i think he proved my point interesting yeah you disagree completely disagree i love a challenging dress code okay because it's like okay how can i push the boundaries how can i exist within the sandbox understand and respect the guardrails but kind of like thrive within it and you couldn't do that without the guardrails. No, I'm not saying that, but I think like uh, it certainly helps. To, I think maybe to kind of like set set the bar, set a standard, so that everyone at least is within like the same within striking distance of each other. Okay. Because if you're just like, yo, show up. However, you're gonna get some fucking guy that shows up in like you know khakis mm-hmm. from that he bought like 20 years ago for his first internship, and then like a fucking you know they're like you're gonna have business casual motherfuckers. And aren't there though always those guys regardless? That's kind of like a guy. Mm, that's like a guy at a wedding. You not know? not in the few weddings I've been to. There were no khakis year. at the gay wedding. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> okay. Besides that, there were, okay. You know what? There was a gaggle. <laughs> there was a gaggle of, of blokes um, that like they were all wearing the same thing. And I think that they were like, oh, yeah, our, our, I don't know if it was like, they're, oh, you know what? They're all coming from Spain. That's what it was. They they're were all, Spaniards? They're all Spanish. Damn. Well, they're all Brits that live in Spain. Oh. 
<laughs> so a very specific type of. And we call them the blue. Guy. We call them the blue shirt boys because they all just had like big blue button downs, untucked, kind of like, like wrinkled shirt tails because they were oh, tucked and they untucked come them. Come on, guys. And I don't remember what the pants were, but they were just the blue shirt boys. But yeah. they were they had sig, so you know they're popular. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean they're they're blokes after all. I guess you're right that you and I think and care so much about clothes that we're always gonna kind of not necessarily stick the landing perfectly, like the lovely people getting married would necessarily want, but we're never going to miss completely off the mark. Whereas well, dress codes do exist for a person who doesn't care about clothes. Yeah. To an unhealthy it's to make degree. sure that you are like, you know, showing up uh, within reason and not just like flouting the rules. Cause again, you don't want to have someone that shows up in coat and tails and then someone <laughs> else that shows up in fucking a ratty, a ratty tee or whatever. Honestly, great advice. When in doubt, just go with tails and a top hat. And when in doubt, you should overdress, but like, <laughs> yeah, um, I like having, I like seeing the dress code and be like, okay, what does this kind of mean? How can I interpret it? How can I like maybe look at my wardrobe and again, like, you know, rain man it where it's like, what would work together that kind of fits within this, but I wouldn't necessarily have done before. And so like, I mean, put it, I put like a brown linen polo shirt underneath a, uh, charcoal gray double breasted blazer for this, for a, uh, wedding with for Ash with the Big Hawk, mm. which I normally never really would have done with some like navy trousers from maiden name RIP and some Our Legacy Workshop boat shoes. Okay. Which I never would have done that. Well, except unless given this dress code where I'm like, okay, well, I kind of have to meet these expectations. What was that dress code? I don't remember. Okay. Because uh, dress codes go one of two ways, too. People either create something completely out of thin air or they stick with a more established dress code that has, you know, uh, a reputation or a pedigree behind it. Like the ones that we kind of said in the pod, people have heard before, whether or not they've necessarily been invited to an event with that specific code. You know what I'm saying? I think it might've been like garden, garden cocktail party or something. That's like a that. stand, but that's a standard one. There's some, I'm saying garden cocktail party. No, no. Meaning like, that's it's they, they didn't come up with that. That's never not existed. No, no, no. But no. some people create a th- crazy fucking theme out of okay, thin air. Themes, that to me is a hard are different than okay. dress code. Sorry, I may be mincing words here. I'm just saying if if it's a if it's it is a completely original dress code where you're like mad libbing it out like to whatever fantasy you and the person you're th- you know getting married to or throwing the event with. That to me is we can't be you can't do that. What's like an example of that though? Like I don't. It could be anything. Uh, okay. Uh, how about, um, uh, Miami night. Okay. 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 Arabian nights, Miami vice. Uh, that's, like, that sounds like very, like it's going to recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, obviously that's all off the dome, but I'm just saying there's people that do that. I, I definitely have. I didn't. Okay, here's just, one. Here's one. Here's one. Um, a wedding that a friend went to was asking for advice. Dress code for Friday night is summer festive. Pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Pretty easy. Yeah, but again, not something that has never existed before. I think people are mainly just looking for reasons not to wear a jacket. Really? You think that's dress the thing? codes? They're like, oh, like, oh, so that just means like shirt, 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 pants, right? Right. Saturday is outrageously fabulous. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. Come on now. I saw some. Come on but now. You know what? But you know what? I saw some because I had a few friends that actually didn't know each other that were both at the wedding. Excuse me. And I was watching their stories and like. There were some outrageously fabulous fits. Oh, yeah, which is great. I'm talking fucking cross dressing. Okay. Again, what's the term now? That is not the term. Okay. It was uh, a, uh, a, a uh, woman, woman uh, dressing like gender bending. Gender bending. <laughs> <laughs> cross dressing. What? Is that, that? That's bad, outdated, dog. Is it? I think so. Whatever. I'm fucking, you know, I'm just being a sick cunt. Um, no, but it was, a man, it was a woman that wore like Annie Hall style, but kind of. Uh, or uh, with like a mustache, or like a fake mustache. So a costume. Yeah. I think there's a, gr- me, I don't know if it was the groom or a groomsman was just straight up had a lobster costume on, but like a lobster, <laughs> like a top, a top hat and cane. That's fire. Dude. It was fire. Okay. Was so, fire. so black tie. It was kind of like, uh, it, black was tie a, lobster. it was more like surrealism, honestly, than anything else. <laughs> a lobster at the top. That's a main black tie. Main black tie. Let me show you the, uh, let me show you this picture. It was actually kind of, I was like, yo, what? That's yo. fire. And uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is right. But that's like a party city costume, and if it's your wedding, you could do whatever the fuck you want. 
I don't think uh, I don't think that was the groom. Oh no! Well, then that's just, that's just a motherfucker that showed up in a Halloween costume. Yeah. That, that's not accept. I mean, listen, dude. Listen, in terms of absolutely fabulous, <laughs> I guess maybe that's acceptable. But that is a, outrageously fabulous. That is outrageously fabulous. That is that is straight up a Halloween costume. But there were there was someone wearing this tie where I was like, actually, I want to text the person, be like, yo, what what do you call that tie? Because there's some like. It must have been some, and again, this is me, you know, maybe it's because I don't take tailoring seriously like my, like my man's over here, but I'm like, I want that fucking ridiculous tie where it had like two, it was like a bolo structure, but instead of a, a clasp up here, it just kind of had like two pillow tassels at the ends of the strings. Okay. It was fucking gas. So it was like a uh, accoutrement that you would find on like a beautiful set of drapes that they just wore as a exactly. tie. So exactly. it's just like, exactly. you could just, yeah, go to, just go to but fucking like Joanne that, Fabrics and make one. But that level of dress code is more like, hey, kind of like non or like everyday people like, yo, Treat this like a fashion show. Yeah. Go nuts. And I appreciate that versus just like, I'm not saying this is what I want for my wedding, but it's like, if I'm invited to, if the dress code is like, yo, go crazy. Like, I appreciate that because it frees people to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you show up looking normal, that's totally fine. But, uh, you know, the you're, you're not within the realm of craziness, but the people that are going crazy, they're not like the outliers either. Yeah. I think a good, maybe a good piece of advice is, um, use New Year's Eve as a little R&D. There you go. Because that's, that's where it's like, nice. yo, it's New Year's Eve. It's that's not that weddings aren't parties. Not all of them are. Um, uh, but at the same time, it's like it, it's there's you, you're not going to embarrass anybody but yourself. So on New Year's Eve, maybe try out some shit like all the stuff that um, PJ was talking about in terms of like, you know, whether it's like a lot of silk or doing like denim black tie a la Ralph, like Test that out at New Year's Eve. See what the reception is like. And if you're getting fucking more hits than misses from people, fucking wear that to a wedding. Yeah. There you go. Wigs. Wigs <laughs> are your friend. Wigs? I wore a wig on New Year's Eve. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but would you would you wear a wig to a wedding? If the groomsman's pulling up in a lobster fit, then yeah, I'm, pu I'm busting out the wig. I mean, I guess they are all... It is A wig is kind of like... Well, I mean, some people need like wear wigs for medical reasons, yeah. so I'm not here to... I'm not here to wig shame. Yeah. It's time to wig out! Yeah. Do you still have um, that blonde bob? That fuck-ass blonde a, bob? It's neon pink, but no, I don't. It was, oh. cost, it was very itchy. It cost 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, <laughs> About the same as uh, that lobster costume, I would assume. Sure. Probably. Uh, anyway, this has been another episode of The Afters. <laughs> um... Chef, take us out. Yeah. All <laughs> How right. do we end these? I don't God. know, dude. We got to go to Paris. Chef, bye. Bye.